so yeah you're gonna wait yourself out of being able to buy for the buy now or wait thing and I hate to say that but that's what I'm realistically wanting to set a fair expectation for a lot of my clients right now. Because a lot of people, I'm getting questioned, well, should I buy now or should I wait? Um, you know, I've heard the market's gonna crash. Okay, well, I'll link to a video up here and down below of a video I did in 2017 maybe of like, is the Denver housing market gonna crash? Because I was getting the question for about a year and a half. Um, and that was, you know, what, five years ago now? Four years ago? Um, anyway. So, I work in the now. Uh, my crystal ball has been broken for a very long time. I'm sure everybody's has, and otherwise I would be a much wealthier person if I knew exactly what was gonna happen. But I work in now, and statistically, what makes sense would happen based on economic indicators, what's likely to happen. Um, and I, I'm trying to explain to a lot of my clients that I'm not a pushy person. I understand risk aversion. I married an engineer, a lot of my clientele, and I'm an engineer, a lot of my clientele is very type A, right? Very analytical. I need to have all of the information and all of the answers before I feel comfortable making a decision. So in an uncertain market situation or something where you can't have all of the answers because there's no way to tell the future, then they just feel uncomfortable making a decision and moving forward. I get that. Um, a lot of times, if you decide to, well, I'm just gonna wait because I don't know what's gonna happen, um, you're gonna wait yourself out of being able to buy. Not only just buy what you want, but buy anything, um, or anything that would meet your needs. And I wanna run a couple examples by you. So let's say um, $500,000 property, right? Our median price point here in Denver <laughs> is 700k depending on you know between 650 dollars and $725,000 whether you're including or, uh, attached properties versus just single family homes anyway but so that's not even an average house here in, in the Denver Metro but I'll just say $500,000 for easy round numbers that $500,000 house a year ago or that $500,000 house last year is now $600,000 and it was about 400 the year or 420 the year before that so annual appreciation rate here in Denver, March over March of this year to March last year, is 21 plus percent, depending on which segment of the market you're looking at. But overall, median price point is up over 20 percent versus a year ago. That's a hell of an investment, which is why I was just showing an investor property <laughs> over here off of South Broadway. I'm at Euro Crepes, by the way. Um, I already ate most of this because it is delicious. So if you need a good South Broadway um, breakfast or brunch place, and they do dinners in the summers, Euro Crepes is hands down my best spot. Um, and I'm here just after they open and everybody else is sitting on the patio. So I um, wanted to shoot this for y'all. But that's the piece of, okay, with a market that is rapidly appreciating, you can't save fast enough to keep up with how quick the prices are going up. So that's working against you on the weight piece, okay? The other part working against you is interest rates going up. So yes, interest rates will go up, they will go down. They will go up, down, left, right, and sideways within an hour. <laughs> They vary all the time, but interest rates have been so low, historically low, since 2008, 2009, about 2009, that a lot of people that are just now hitting that point of wanting to buy a house are not, they don't have a frame of reference for anything that's, you know, over 4%. <laughs> um, I bought my first house 12 years ago, and my interest rates were under 4% then. Um, so, you know, four and a half, five percent, it's freaking a lot of people out, okay? So when the interest rates go up, that reduces your buying power, because most people don't live in the price, they live in the payment, okay? So I'm gonna quote some rough numbers here, and this is just based on an amortization calculator. It's just principal and interest for the loan costs. This doesn't include taxes, insurance, HOA, all these other costs that add into it. But let's say you were looking at, a year ago, you were looking at a $500,000 property. 10% um, down, so 50K. There's closing costs and other things that I'm not going to talk, you know, go into the nitty gritty, but so 500K property, 10% down um, at 4% interest rate, which last year was very doable, even last November <laughs> was very doable. Um, that's going to cost you roughly $21.50 a month, okay? So that same house from last year is now 600K plus, so that's obviously not going to work in that monthly payment budget. 
but also with the interest rates going up. So let's say the rates go up to five and a half, which depending on your income situation is possible. Obviously they went up, everybody freaked out. They came down just a little bit, you know, speculation wise. But let's say instead of 4% interest rate, you're talking five and a half. That same 21.50 a month, even the same $50,000 down, so more than 10% now, is only gonna buy you a $428,000 property to keep your payment at the same, I think it's like $428,250 or something like that, um, to be roughly that same $2,150 a month payment. So not only are the prices going up so fast that you can't save fast enough to keep up, with the interest rates going up, that reduces your buying power. So let's say you wanted that three bed, two bath, single family home, which is not 500K, depending on what part of town you're in, not anymore, but a year ago, very doable in some suburb areas here in Denver. Not only can you no longer buy that because it's now 600K, but you can only buy a $420,000 property or because it's competitive, a $390,000 property that you can use part of your down payment to you know, bid up to 420, in which case your payment's gonna cost more too. So that single family house that was like, okay, you could probably do that last year, but you decided to wait because you didn't know what was going on, has now turned into a two bed, one bath townhouse in the burbs um, situation. So it's just, I wanna be realistic with people and make sure they understand that I'm not, I don't wanna push anybody to buy. I don't think that makes sense for a lot of people. I want you to, I want to inform people enough to feel comfortable in the decision that they're unsure about. Whether that is, you know, buy nothing. Whether that is move to a more affordable area. Whether that is, you know, move in with family and save some money so you can save faster. Um, whether that is buy a stepping stone property, what I call a stepping stone property, which is, hey, I can't buy the house that I want, but okay, now I'll buy that townhouse so maybe in a couple of years I can get closer to what I want because with the market appreciating so quickly, let the market do a lot of the saving for you, okay? Yes, there's cost of buying and selling. A lot of times with this rapid appreciation of even, you know, 10%, you're gonna cover your buying and selling costs in a year. So, nonetheless, at 20% a year, you cover those costs in six, seven, eight months. And it's, it's a better end goal to get you where you want to go than doing nothing. So, I just wanna be realistic. I want people to understand does it suck that you can't buy, you know, the quintessential starter home for less than $600,000? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> whole different video. Realtors aren't happy about this either, because if we can't help people get into what they want, then it doesn't help us. <laughs> um, where people can't afford, you know, what they want to buy, they don't buy anything. And, and if people aren't selling because the market's crazy and they can't buy anything, you know, to move into, there's a lot of challenges, so I'll do a whole nother video on why the current market situation is worse for a lot of realtors than it is more help. But I want, sh I want people to understand that the I'm gonna wait because I don't feel comfortable and I don't know what's gonna happen, a lot of times in this current market situation, the way it has been for you know three, four plus years, you very well could wait yourself out of the, what you want and into something you don't even wanna consider. Um, but you gotta start somewhere, right? Let's look at what we have, let's make a goal and make a plan to get where we wanna go. I'm not about forcing people into buying or selling. I talk people out of selling houses all the time. I probably do that at least once a week because I think investments are, I, it's, I mean, it's, it's a crazy investment, um, crazy good investment. So, but I just want people to have enough information to make an educated decision. So run those numbers, use a mortgage calculator. I like Carl's Mortgage Calculator, Carl's with a K. It's a free app, I use that for mobile all the time because I can play with the numbers. Um, I use mlcalc.com, it's a free you know, online mortgage calculator when I'm on desktop because I can play with the you know HOA interest, MI, all that kind of stuff. And just run the same price point at different interest rates and see how much more that costs you every month. And then when you're looking at, you know, Zillow or Redfin or your MLS or whatever online at houses, then look at, hey, this is what I want and this is how much it costs. Okay, our, you know, sell the list price ratio is anywhere between 5% over and 20% over. Okay, so that, just because it's listed for 500, it's probably gonna sell for six. Um, and the market just keeps 
appreciating that way. So seasonally, we're in a little bit of an adjustment and I always, I'll link to another video that I just posted um, maybe a month ago, two, three weeks ago on market situation and kind of how things are starting to shift and some of that's gonna be seasonal and some of that's gonna be because of interest rate increase and other things. So I think it's gonna soften here a little bit. I think end of summer, early fall is a great time to pick something up for a lot of buyers that can't compete with a lot of cash. Um, and have had a hard time securing something and don't want to bid up, you know, 20%. But just understand, don't waste yourself out of being able to get anything, nonetheless, what you want. Make a plan to get there. So if you're looking to do that here on the Denver Metro, please reach out to me. My contact information is on my website. The link for that is down below. I love helping people accomplish their goals. That's my goal. So that's why I talk people out of selling houses all the time. Like, what's your goal? Um, let's try to figure out a plan. And I have buyers, I mean, the buyer that I just closed a month ago, I started working with her a year and a half ago. You know, life changes, things came up. Um, I have buyers that I worked with for three, three, three to four years before they actually decided to purchase something and, and move forward with it, and that's fine. Um, but make a plan. So if you are in Denver, hit me up. My contact info is on my website. If you are in a different metro area, um, please feel free to reach out to me. I have a great network if you need to meet in another place. So thanks so much for the time, and best of luck out there, guys.